Espèce Yes, that's right. My name's Saunders. I'm Miss Fogg. Thank goodness they've sent us another man. Come and wait in Mr. Jenkins' room. I come in every day to collect the dinner money and do the accounts. So you'll be seeing quite a lot of me. Oh, I hope so. Hang your coat up in there. Thank you. I'm afraid the man before you was dreadfully inefficient, Mr. Saunders. Oh, really? Never seemed able to keep his dinner money straight. Always too much or too little. I hope you'll be able to do better than that, Mr. Saunders. Oh, I hope so, too. Anyway, I'll make sure that you always show a profit. Oh, no. That won't do at all. It must be right to a penny. Then I can close my books on Friday evening and feel that I really deserve my weekend's rest. I'll remember. One just needs system, Mr. Saunders. System and method. Now, where did I put the milk list? Ah! How very unexpected. Mr. Saunders? Never leave this door open, Mr. Saunders. It's too inviting to itchy fingers. There are thieves here, all of them. What happened to the doorknob? Oh, um, I have it. It uh, <laughs> came off in my hand. Oh, never mind. I'll get Mr. Gregory to, uh, uh, find yourself a, a seat. We must have a chat. You saw the assistant director last week, I believe. Uh, yes, he told me it might only be a temporary job. Yeah, that's so. Uh, of course, if you do well here, it could be permanent. What experience have you had? Well, none, unless you count six months as a gunnery instructor in the Navy before I was demobbed. Well, that's something, I suppose. And since then? Oh, various jobs. I... Salesman, selling advertising space. I even tried my hand as a spot of journalism, but, uh... I don't know, I, I couldn't seem to settle down. You went to a training college? Uh, yes, I did the year's emergency course. But that's all, I'm afraid. Uh, surprise, really, to see how easy it was. Yes, it's easy enough, all right. <coughs> That side of it, anyway. What made you decide to teach? You shouldn't be tired of life at your age. Oh, well, it doesn't matter, I suppose. The main thing is you're here. You couldn't have come to a better place for your experience. No, that's what they told me. I'm starting off the hard way, putting you in charge of class two. Not doing that because I want to, but because there's no one else to do the job, so it can't be helped. I like children. I think I'll be able to teach them. Let's hope you're not disillusioned too quickly. The children here are duds, throwouts, all of them. Most of the children in class two are 14, but there are some of 15 amongst them. A year older and a year sillier. So was I at that age. Yes, I'm sure. Their trouble is they think they're adults already. I don't want to disillusion you, Mr. Saunders, but you'll have to have eyes in the back of your head. It's a tough school. Well, the neighbors are a tough school, too. If you can keep this lot down, you can keep any class down. You have to start by reading the right act. Thank you. About time. I never heard such a noise. This is a sample of how you're going to behave this term. I can see some of you heading for a nasty fall. This is not a farmyard. Doris Hope. Yes, sir. Kindly tell us what this room is besides being a classroom. Please, sir, it's our own. Exactly. And you were treated accordingly. Not like a pigsty. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Mr. Saunders. Kindly open that window, please. <coughs> the top half, Mr. Saunders, the bottom half is screwed down. <laughs> Quiet, all of you! <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Saunders. I've been meaning to get that sash court mended. We'll make this an arithmetic lesson. 
Harkness and Shrub, give out the books. See what I mean? Hold them down. If you value your sanity, keep them down. This term, we're very glad to have Mr. Saunders with us. Mr. Saunders was an officer in the Navy for a time, so I'm sure he knows all about dealing with troublemakers. If you have any nonsense, Mr. Saunders, you have my full permission to deal with it severely. I don't think that'll be necessary. Page 16. Problems 1, 3 and 4. Begin. Don't give them an inch. Good luck. Thank you. Could I have your attention for a moment? Well, I suppose you're wondering what this new bloke's going to be like. What sort of a sport he's going to be. That's right, isn't it? And I'm wondering what sort of sport you'll turn out to be. Oh, jolly sport he'll be. <laughs> yes, well, I'll ignore that remark for the moment. I'm hoping you'll help me as much as you can with things like school routine, where things are kept and all that. I don't know my way about at the moment, so I'll leave it up to you to help me as much as you possibly can. I'm sure that if we can work together, we'll have a very happy ship. <laughs> Class. If you've any problems at all about your work or anything else, come and talk to me about them. And I'll do my best to help you as much as I possibly yeah. can. Yeah? Go on. I dare you. Well, that's all for now. I'll just take your names down when I can find a piece of paper. Who's going to be monitors? Me and Shrub is monitors, sir. Yeah. Oh, we don't want him. Him and Shrub are monitors every year. Yeah, fair enough, Alice. Why, everybody? Did you say Angel? I said build up. Just sit down, yeah, everyone. I said everyone. You know, put a skirt round you and a rose in your hair, you'll make a pretty picture sitting up there. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, Arky, he thinks you're a bloomy sissy. Want to borrow my skirt, Arkness? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, in future, if you want to ask any questions, I want you to raise your hands and wait until I'm ready for you. Yes? Who's going to be monitors? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Shrub was monitors last time, sir. Well, in that case, it's time somebody else had a turn, isn't it? Now, so there's no ill feeling. I suggest we put it to the vote. Any suggestions? Yeah, how about me? Yeah, give Old Fletcher a go. Oh, he's no good. Give Matchett a go. Let's vote for Kyle. Oh, Let's have all Vote, vote, vote for Here, sir, couldn't we have a girl monitor? No, fear I don't have a bloody chick monitor. Well, I'm not going to be all around by any blooming bird. Oh, belt up, will you? Let's have all <laughs> Giving you any trouble? Uh, no, I was letting them choose their own monitors. I'm afraid it got a bit out of hand. Oh, that's no good. The boys will all pick their own pals, and the girls will all vote for Hool and Kite. They're the two glamour boys. <laughs> Leave them alone in here for five minutes. You'll have all the girls buzzing around them like flies. Could that do any harm? Yes, I'm afraid it could. We've already got one of your girls occupying a bed in the maternity ward. You'd better leave this to me. Now, pay attention, all of you. Think you're clever, don't you? Somebody gives you a chance to do something really interesting. And that's a signal for you all to behave like lunatics. I've warned you once this morning. I don't intend to go on warning you. Take care, that's all. Just take care. Harkness and Shrub, stand up. For the time being, you'd better carry on as monitors. You can make a start by going to the cloakroom and checking the number of gym shoes. Oh, I'm sorry, Arthur. Mr. 
Mr. Saunders, this is Mr. Gregory, my assistant. He's in charge of class three and woodwork. How are you? All right, thank you. So you're the chap who's been pulling the school to pieces. <laughs> this is Mr. Saunders, who's just joined us. Mrs. Pond. Nice to have you with us, Mr. Saunders. Mr. Murray. Hello there. Mr. Bickerstaff. Ha, how do you do? It's uh, Miss Fogg, whom we've already met. You do take milk and sugar, Mr. Saunders? Thank you, yes. And Miss Collins. Thank goodness they sent us another man. Oh, steady. Mr. Saunders might be a married man. <laughs> really, Alec? What on earth will Mr. Saunders think? I'm thinking this is one of the times I'm glad I'm a single man. You're another of these brilliant varsity men, Mr. Saunders. No, I haven't a degree in anything. Oh, you're in good company, neither have I. Now, all you need here is common sense and discipline. You can keep your fancy diplomas. Have you seen that new ministry? Look at Collie there. She's full of them. She's no more idea of handling kids than... The biggest staff has of handling her. <laughs> During the holidays, I read a very interesting book on child guidance. Child guidance? These days, that's what the kids give their parents, isn't it? <laughs> I, um, I suppose it is a little early to ask, but have you worked out any projects for your class yet, Mr. Saunders? Oh, well, I, I did have an idea of teaching geography through food, you know, where the, uh, where the most important foods come from, how they're produced, and so on. You mean like um, cornflakes from Canada, and cocoa and coffee from Africa? Yes, yes, that's the idea. I, I, I tried a similar scheme when, when I was training, uh, only I used raw materials. The only trouble with these schemes is we don't have enough textbooks. And even if we had, the hooligans in this school would tear them to bits to make model airplanes with. Well, then I suppose you'd use their interest in planes to teach them geography that way. Good for you, Saunders. You'll do all right. Just find out what they're interested in and plug away at that. If that's the answer, then all you've got to do in this school is teach sex. <laughs> Isn't that so, Collie? Why ask me, Mr. Gregory? Oh, come on, Collie. Don't be bashful. Tell Mr. Saunders about the facts of life at Warrell Street. <laughs> now, that's unfair, Arthur. I'm surprised at you. Another cup of tea, Mr. Saunders. Thank you. All right. I'll see to it. Come on, Scott. Stand still, both of you. Hey! Yes, I might have known it was you, Harkness. Go to my room, both of you, and wait outside. That was the school museum. Oh, dear, what a shame. Hurry up, Miss Fogg. Every minute counts. Ah, oh, there it is. Come along now, Mrs. Palm, Mr. Murray. Wasn't your collection of bird's eggs in there, Mr. Bickerstaff? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, Mr. Saunders, you better have one of these. When you use it, there are certain things to remember. First, make sure the fingers are stretched out and the thumb well back. Never strike them across the thumb. Always cane on the left hand, they need the other for writing. Unless, of course, you have to give two strokes, then it can't be helped. Yes, I see. And make sure the arm is held out horizontally, then if you miss the hand, there's no risk of catching them across the body. You can't be too careful. Thank you. Oh, by the way, when you cane them, you have to enter it in the punishment book. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'd like to try a few other methods first. Well, it's up to you, of course. If you can get along without it, so much the better. But with class two, I don't think you've got very much chance. This boy Harkness, Mr. Saunders, he's in your class. He's one of the worst boys I've ever had to deal with. Yeah, I had a bit of trouble with him already. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Go on, get out of it! Come down in the mouth the first day. That's the best way to deal with him. I've just been informed I have to take my class for a science lesson tomorrow. Science? Well, you're certainly a valuable acquisition if that's one of your subjects. Oh, it isn't. When I told Mr. Jenkins that, he said mug it up the night before. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? I expect you to teach anything in a school like this. Nothing very interesting there, I suppose you gathered. Just the children's encyclopedia. 
But I think the children this was written for must be grandparents by now. <laughs> You'll have to join the public library, Mr. Saunders. Now, I couldn't manage without it. Well, have you managed to find decent digs? I found it a terrible problem when I first came here. Oh, I've got a lovely room. Overlooking the shunting yard at Scott Street. Oh. Just cheap, that's the main thing. Oh, yes, one certainly has to think of that. But you can get good digs, if you're lucky enough to find the right place. Well, all I can say is that my luck's at a very low ebb. I've got one of those one-room bachelor apartments. Oh, I know the idea, yes. You want to go from the kitchen to the bathroom, you stay where you are. <laughs> <laughs> that's just about it. Oh. You know, my landlady said there was another one to let. Would you be interested? Yes, very interested. It sounds like a good idea. Well, Mr. Saunders, got your first day over then? Yes, thank you. There haven't been much trouble, I'm glad to say. <laughs> they don't know him yet. <laughs> you wait till the end of the week, then you'll really find out what's coming to you. <laughs> and of course, if you're the right type, then you won't have any trouble. I've been at this school 25 years, Mr. Saunders. No, longer than Mr. Jenkins even, so I think I understand some of the problems here. If there's anything you want to know, you come to me. Thank you. Well, I hope to be able to learn from all of you. Yeah, no doubt. But I'm not one of these types that went from school to college and back to school again. I've been out in the world. When I was your age, I was a master joiner, running my own business. Very successful, too. What made you take up teaching, then? It was the 30s. There was a slump, you see. Things got bad in my trade. And this, well, it was steady. So I thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, if I'd wanted to get out, during the war was the time to do it. I could have made a mint of money in the munitions line. I expect you could. But I didn't. Staff was short and all that, so I stayed. And they did hint as there might be a chance of a headship, but nothing came of it. Oh, that was hard luck. Well, it won't happen now. It's too near me retiring age. Oh, <laughs> roll on the day. Believe me, if I'd had half the chances these kids get today, I'd never have seen the inside of Warrow Street. Teaching's a mug's game, in my opinion. Short pay, hard work, and no thanks for it. In fact, it's a dead-end job. I don't agree with that at all. I don't, either. Oh, I'm all for better pay and better conditions. Who isn't? But the nursing profession's a badly paid one. Would you call that dead-end? <laughs> yes, you would. Because a lot of the satisfaction depends upon how much of yourself you put into the job. See, I enjoy my work, Mr. Gregory. Uh, I think she's good. right. Anyway, there can't be anything dead-end about teaching the future generation to do better than we did, can there? <laughs> Little man, desolation, no one laughs and no one smiles. Mine's a cheerless occupation, cracking ice for father's pulse. The future generation, Mr. Saunders, no there's your raw no material. Mine's a cheerless <laughs> occupation. Get out the Come on, Go on, Now be quiet. Let's settle down to some work and pull your socks up. <laughs> Come on, Maggie, pull them up. Get up. Pull them down. Now, that's enough. I said quiet and I meant it. Robbins, come out here. What are you doing with your coat on in class? Take it off and put it in the cloakroom. I'm cold. Robin, you heard what I said. Do you want me to take it off for you? Put it... Come here. going to take it off. You can't make me. Yes, I am. Come Leave here. Leave me alone. Now... <laughs> I've only got one pair. And they're being mended. I'm sorry, son. Here, put it on. Go back to your place. Hot mess and shrub, give out the readers. We don't like reading, sir. Maybe not, but you might find it useful one day, even if you only read the racing results. Yeah, you can see all that on the telly. My dad don't read all right. He does all right. He has 28 quid a week down at the docks. It's more than what you get, ain't it, sir? Yes, it is. It's easier work, too. Yeah, go on. All you got to do is teach a bunch of kids. <laughs> Teaching kids like you isn't so easy, Thatcher. <laughs> anyway, it's not everyone wants to work at the docks, even for 28 pounds a week. What's good enough for my dad's good enough for me. Sit down, Hatchet. Who are you pushing? You heard what he said. Got claw fears or something. Who gets you? Parker Darkness. Hey, behind my teeth. 
Yeah, go on then. Harkness, hurry up and give those books out. Julius Caesar? Oh. We read this last term. Yeah, couldn't understand the words. Couldn't we have something new, sir? Here, yeah. doesn't it make him look drippy with them on? I like him. Yeah, you would. I reckon it makes him look like Gregory Peck. Don't you, Marge? Yeah, it does a bit. He looks real posh with them on. Here we are. Page 49, Act 3, Scene 1. This is just before they murder Caesar. Who's Caesar when he's returned? Well, Julius Caesar. Doesn't anyone know the story? I saw a film with Marlon Brando. Did you understand it? No. Why not? Because she was naked in the back row. <laughs> now, that's enough. I said quiet and I meant it. You. You in the back row. Yes, you. Start reading. Janice, don't read, sir. She can't. Well, not at all. Neither can I, sir. Nobody never learned this, sir. That's right, sir. There's four of them who can't read, all right. Well, it's quite a simple story, really. Tell us, sir. Yeah, go on, sir. Tell us about it. Let's see you, then. Tell me a story. <laughs> Tell me a story. All right, all right. But only if you be quiet now. As I say, it's a very simple story and can be told in a few words. The bloke who ran it took hell of a lot. He took millions. <laughs> now, Julius Caesar was a sort of a king, or to be more accurate, a dictator. Like Hitler? That's right, yes, like Hitler. Now, at that time, a group of men, you can call them gangsters if you like, they weren't happy with the way Caesar was running things, so they decided to bump him off. Oh, I'm coming to get you, Caesar, kid. <laughs> All right, Hall, now that you're on your feet, start reading. Who, me, sir? Yes, you, sir. Page 49. Oh, but I ain't no good at reading. I won't be able to judge that until I've heard you, will I? Oh, please, sir. Let Hartley's have a go. He's the best reader. That may be, but he told you to read. Hall, you read Julius Caesar. Harkness, you be the soothsayer. Hatchet, Artemidorus. Ask me what? Who's he with his hat? <laughs> Angel, read the part of Decius. Here. Is that a woman? Because if it is, I'm reading it, I'll tell you. Now, don't be silly, Angel. All right, Hall, from the top. The it, itty, it, it. The Ides. Start again. The Ides of March are gone. Come, not gone. Who's the soothsayer? Me. Carry on. Aye, aye, aye. Shut up. <laughs> aye, Caesar, but not gone. That's good. Carry on, Artemidorus. We're not going to be put on handle. <laughs> Hail Caesar! Hail Hitler! Carry on, have you? Read this sh. Read this sh. <laughs> the word is schedule. But this is a play. It must be acted with feeling and expression. Who? When you read for Caesar, it's these couchings and these lowly courtesies might fire the blood of ordinary men and turn pre-ordinance and first decree into the law of children. Be not fond to think that Caesar bears such rebel blood. for it, you two. Get your hands up, both of you. Get it up higher. <laughs> now you. No, not that one. Don't you know which one yet? Can't you take your medicine? Get your hand up. I haven't time to waste on you. Well, what are you waiting for? Well, if you won't do it yourself, I'll do it for you. My brother alone, he's got a bad hand. Who asked you to interfere? No one, but he's been hospital with that hand. He got a splinter in and he went poison. Well, why didn't he say so, then? Well, get the other hand up. Go on, get it up higher. Get your hand up. I haven't time to waste on you. <laughs> now, let me be a lesson to all of you. Now, go, quietly. Go on, get a move on. I'll get even with that swine one of these days. Hey, shut up. To hell with him. He's just another of them. Let 
to keep an eye on that boy, Harkness, Mr. Saunders. He's beginning to fancy himself. No time to worry about him now. Let's get in there before the dinner gets cold. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord have mercy on us. Cottage pie. Mr. Saunders, I had a word with my Mrs. Hopkins. She just wants a few days to get the room ready. She thought you might move in next Saturday. Oh, thanks, yes. Saturday will suit me fine. What's this? You and Miss Collins go habiting? <laughs> She's got you on the hook, then. I thought you were smarter than that. That's exactly the attitude I expected you to adopt, Mr. Gregory. That's why I made a point of announcing it at the dinner table, instead of waiting for you to find out. So it's you that swallowed the hook, Gregory. Mr. Jenkins, thought of taking my class to the Tower of London. Well, that's excellent. London's so full of history. Thought it might bring it closer to them, make it more real. They could see some of the places where it actually happened. Well, I think that's a lovely idea. I do admire your energy. It's always Whitechapel and Jack the Ripper that like that. Yeah, it's all very well for you, Miss Collins, turning the classroom into a play centre. You get them when they don't know anything. Time we get them, they don't want to know anything. And why? Because they've never been made to knuckle down to it, that's why. I don't think there's anything wrong in making the lessons more interesting. That's the way they'll learn, isn't it? You've got to cut out the frills in a school like this and teach them a trade, Mr. Saunders. If you can teach them the meaning of discipline and the way to use their hands, you've done the best you can for them. You may appreciate that when you've been here a bit longer and understand the type of boy you're dealing with. Before I joined the Navy at the age of 14, Mr. Gregory, I was brought up in an orphanage. They thought exactly the way you think. Don't reason with them, treat them rough. Make men of them. Yeah. So don't talk to me about understanding the type of boy we get. I'm one of them. And as it's a case of the blind leading the blind, you better not forget your stick. You might trip up. <laughs> oh, I'll put him off his dinner. You were rather hard on him, Arthur. He's got a lot to learn. He's only doing the same as the rest of us. He's trying his best. Now then, at the time of the Spanish Armada, things at sea were totally different in comparison to what they are today. You were in the Navy, wasn't you? Yes, I was, but uh, not at the time that we're talking about. Was you an officer, sir? No, I wasn't. Oh, Jenkins says you was. I know Mr. Jenkins said I was, but Mr. Jenkins was mistaken. <laughs> Couldn't make it, eh? Bowed up, can't you? Why don't you listen for a change? Was you called up then, sir? No, I joined the Navy when I left school. As a matter of fact, I wasn't much older than you at the time. Were you in many battles, sir? Now, never mind about me. We're talking about the Spanish Armada. Can anyone tell me who was in command of the British fleet at that time? Anybody? Who? Uh, Christopher Columbus. <laughs> no, no, no. Christopher Columbus was the man who discovered America. Now, come along. Think hard. Sir Francis Drake, sir. You're quite right. Yes, it was Sir Francis Drake. Now then, I want you to make a note of this date in your books, everybody. The Spanish Armada approached the English coast in July 1588. Now, don't forget, at that time, ship's guns couldn't fire as accurately as they can today. Revenge. Revenge. That was the name of Drake's ship. And it was on the revenge that Drake led the British fleet to victory. Was that the flagship, sir? That's right. Did they have as many ships as us, sir? Of course they did, stupid. They always do, don't they, sir? Like in the Battle of Britain. Was she ever wounded in the Navy, sir? Now, listen, you want me to talk about the Navy so as you can sit there and do nothing. Well, you're unlucky. You're going to learn about the Spanish Armada. Bad luck, sir. We've had it. All right, go quietly.
Well? Do you ever a prisoner of war, sir? No. Why do you ask? My dad was. He was captured at Singapore. They put him on building that railway. Mm. Did he have a bad time? Mum says she hardly knew him when he got back. All skin and bones he was. I was born the year after. Dad died when I was six. Don't remember him much. Except him. Shouting and screaming all night. Scared the daylights out of you, did? Mum said he was balmy, really. I'm sorry. Was you ever out that way, sir? No. No, I wasn't. Not during the war. I was mostly in the Mediterranean. I'd like to kill some of them yellow... Well, I wanted to tell you, sir. Ever since I heard you was in the Navy. Thought you might like to know. Thank you, Harkness. I'm glad you told me. Oh, well. Good night, sir. Good night, Harkness. See you tomorrow. Half a crown, please. Thank you. Yes, sir. A gin and tonic. All right. I thought it was time we let him into the secret about your double life. You work here? Five nights a week. I find it relaxing after Warren Street. And it helps me maintain my position in our affluent society. What was it again? A gin and tonic and I'll have a beer. A gin and tonic and a beer. You look tired. Beginning the show, is it? Well, it's a bit of a struggle. Mind you, I was telling Anne for the first time today, I felt I was getting through to them. You know, holding their attention. <laughs> not for long, though. Most of the time, they act as if I'm not even in the room. Yes, even with my 11-year-old, some of them I can't do anything with. There must be an answer somewhere. There is. Bad stock and filthy homes in most cases. <laughs> Take that dark-haired number in there, for example. <laughs> You've got a girl called Doris Hope in your class, haven't you? Yeah. That's her mother. Which is the father? <laughs> Neither of them. He's in jail for robbery with violence. So it's Uncle Fred one night and Uncle Charlie the next. Some of their kids aren't much better. Look at that hall boy in your class. <laughs> he was boasting to me one day. He didn't mind sleeping in the same room with his sisters because they could teach him a lot. But you don't mean to tell me that you're trying to teach seriously with that crowd of yours. Well, that's what I'm there for, isn't it? In a school like ours, it doesn't matter what you teach as long as you keep them occupied. Any subject will do. This is the Murray system. Well, that's the essence of it. Mm. But never relax for a minute. Always keep a new dodge up your sleeve. Time, gentlemen, please. Well, that's my lot. Just hang on until I'll grab my hat and coat, okay? Time, gentlemen, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's have your glasses now, gentlemen. What sort of a kid is Doris Hope? Doris? Very bright. A bit too bright. I suppose she has to be with that background, poor kid. You ready? Yes. Oh, it's quicker out this way. Come along, drink up now. Drink up now, please, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> right, ready? Let's go. Good night, bud. Hello, Mum. Hello, Mum. My system doesn't have to lose sight of the three R's, you know. I find that if I stake one hour's arithmetic for two hours on the pools, I can't go wrong. Well, that's why there's a so dumb in my class. They're suffering from the Murray Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about a bag of fish and chips or a plate of jelly beans? Matter, Inspector. I'm quite sure we should treat it as such. Thank you. Very good, sir. Scrape it. Yes, sir. 
I hope you all noticed I've had yet another visit from the police. Well, you saw them, didn't you? You can believe the evidence of your own eyes, I hope. Last term it was pilfering in sweet shops. And of course, there was the case of the three beauties who were found stoning a cat on the public common. And you'll all remember the two oafs who were found practicing their handwriting in a public convenience. Now, before the term is two weeks old, another boy has got himself into trouble. <coughs> Pay attention! Now I suppose I'm expected to go before the magistrate and say, please let him off. That's what I'm expected to do. But this time I'm not going to do it. He can take his punishment. And when they put him away, I hope it'll be a lesson to all of you. Oh yes, mark my word, some of you are in for a nasty shock. This isn't the only boy who's going to get himself into serious trouble. And before very long, too. And when that happens, it's no use coming running to me saying, please, sir, we didn't know, <coughs> because you know now. <laughs> you have been warned. <coughs> 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 Is there anything I can do, Mr. Jenkins? No, thanks. <coughs> I'll be all right when I'm sat down for a minute. I don't want to worry you now, sir, but did, did you really mean what you said about who? Why, Mr. Saunders? Well, because he is one of my boys, and I know he's one of the troublesome ones, but he's, uh, he's not a bad kid at heart. The worst of a bad bunch. I know the holes. Don't you worry your head about him. If they sent every first offender to an approved school, there wouldn't be room for all of them. Do you think he'll get another chance? Hole? He'll be put on probation, sent back to us to see if we can lick him into shape. Do you think we can do that? I don't want to influence you, Mr. Saunders. But you'll never be able to handle them unless you're as tough as they are. Here, I'd like to show you something. These were collected last term, mainly from class two. Your class, Mr. Saunders. The educational conferences like to talk about developing the mind of the modern child. I've been looking for that mind for 29 years, but I don't think it exists. Not in a school like Worrell Street. Believe me, I'd like to find it. We don't deal with minds, we deal with instincts. Bad ones, mostly. Animal, in some cases. If you can give them a few elementary manners and teach them to read, you've done a great deal. I'm beginning to realize just what a great deal it is. Put the screw on. Keep it on. <laughs> if you value your sanity. You could do worse than take a leaf out of Mr. Gregory's book. He knows. He's my main support here at Worrell Street. Yeah, well, it's not fair. You have to do something about that. Yes, sir. I thought I told you to shorten it. That's the length my mum wants to see. I give the orders here, not your mum. I told you to varnish it, too. I don't want to varnish it, sir. I'm going to wax it. Two inches shorter and varnish it. 
Here's your mallet, boy. Here's your mallet. Hey! What the devil do you think you're doing? Do you realize I've had this chisel 20 years? I'll lend you my own tools, the tools of a master craftsman, and you treat them with contempt. Get out of my sight, boy. Go on, get out of my sight! There's room for only one fool here. Yeah, we all know who that is. <laughs> All right, Aunt Miss, you've asked for it. Come out here! I never knew a boy so full of insolence, but I'm going to thresh it out of you before you leave here. Get your hand up! trousers down again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Saw you at the pictures last night, sir. Yeah, with Miss Collins. It's nice when you're caught in, isn't it? Do you love us, sir? Well, look, I'm sorry, girls. It's, it's getting awfully late. Off you get into the fresh air. Go on. I'm in no hurry, sir. I get all my fresh air at night. It's nice at the pictures, ain't it, sir? Yes, but you're not at the pictures now. Now, come on, girls. Off you go. Oh, sir, you're not a bit interested in us. I wanted to tell you about a date I got with Uli. Though I don't suppose he'll turn up now. He's in trouble. Well, from what I've heard, perhaps that's not a bad thing. Why? Don't you like him, sir? No, I didn't say that. Well, Miss Collins don't, neither. No, because of what he did to a girl in her class. I don't believe it. Honest, I don't. Miss Collins said she called him and Sally Baines in the cloakroom. She said he had all her clothes off her. Do you believe that, sir? I don't think Miss Collins would lie. And I don't believe she said that anyway. Well, even if it is true, it's the school's fault, isn't it? They ought to teach us about sex and that, didn't they? God, cool, wouldn't that be great? <sighs> I'd resign tomorrow. Crack brain theory, you say. Only get the job because they convince the board they know something special. Pottery, folk dancing, or something newfangled. Well, if he doesn't like my work, I'm too old to care. Anyway, they all respond to a warm smile and a well-timed cup of tea. Tea? Good gracious. I was so busy trying to balance the dinner money, I quite forgot about the tea. That's all right, Miss Fogg. I've just made it. Yes, it's the old problem. Not enough schools, not enough teachers of the right sort, too many children of the wrong sort. They know it, yet they pretend they don't. They see the school at its best, all the window dressing carefully arranged. Oh, by the way, Arthur, do you think you can knock a nail in Mrs. Pond's seat? <laughs> yes, I know perfectly well it's a put-up job, yet they refuse to deal with the reality behind it. I'm not following this. What's happening? The divisional inspector for schools. What I try to show you is how all these developments have gradually decreased distance and brought the countries of the Earth closer together. With the coming of the aeroplane, it is just as easy to go to Japan or India as it was to go to Margate or Brighton 100 years ago. And this development is still going on. Now then, I want to ask you a question. If you had had the opportunity of taking part in an adventure, where would you have gone? Would you have gone with Columbus to America, with Raleigh to the Indies, or, or with Scott to the Pole? Oh, no, not him. What do you want to go wanting about like that for? <laughs> I'll explain in a minute, Thatcher. Who? Oh, well, please, sir. Well, 
Well, Wild West for me. Pony Express or something. I can see that Hoolies are romantic. A what? <laughs> well, they were opening up a country just as much as Columbus when he discovered America. And you'd be in the right company there. <laughs> Though I'm not so sure you would. <laughs> no, I don't think I'd have chosen that. <laughs> no, 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 I'm asking you. Well, suppose I said, let's go to the moon, and we could. How many of you would come with me? Well, that's a good showing. Now, why would you want to go to the moon? Harkness. Just to see what it's like. Just sir. to see what it's like. And Thatcher? Well, I don't know, sir. It'd be fun. Spirit of adventure. And it was the same spirit of adventure that took Scott to the pole. I'm glad to see some of that spirit here, too. All right, put your hands down. Some of you may well go to the moon, or at any rate, out of space. Because that's the sort of world we're moving into next. The sort of world that you'll be living in. You'll be its citizens, its problems will affect your lives. It's up to you to help to make the decisions. And that's why I would choose a modern adventure. Because I believe the world you are going out to meet will be one of the most adventurous and exciting in all history. All right, sit down, sit down. Right off you go. Good night, children. Good night. Where did you do your training, Mr. Saunders? Well, I just did the year's emergency course. That's all, I'm afraid. I'm uh, hoping to learn as I go along. Well, your lesson was one of the best I've heard for some time. Your teaching is good, and it'll be better, but only if you have faith both in yourself and the children. Yes, yes, confidence, yes, sir. Well, allow me to thank you for the real pleasure your lesson gave me. And if at any time you need advice, I hope you'll call on me. Thank you very much, sir. I don't suppose he meant I was the greatest teacher in the world, but... No, but it's encouraging. We could certainly do with a bit of encouragement. Yeah, I'll say we could. Still, he was only telling what I've been telling you for weeks now. He was without prejudice. Hey, Anne, what about letting your hair down tonight? That's exactly what I'm going to do at the hairdressers. Oh, no, not tonight. Cancel it. Come and have a drink. Oh, I'm sorry, John, but I've broken my appointment with him twice already. I see. Well, if you won't celebrate with me, I'll do my drinking alone. Or better still, I'll go and break down the Murray system. I might take you up on that later. You'll be lucky. Bye. <laughs> Margaret and Doris. Fancy meeting you. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? You're going to go and buy some fish and chips, sir? Here, have some of mine, sir. No, I can't eat your supper. Oh, oh yes, go on, sir, then, sir. Good. Here, take that big one. All right, thank you. Here. Yeah. How'd you get on with the old inspector, sir? I bet you knocked him cold with all them words you spoke. He did me anyway. My ears was flapping flowers afterwards. Yeah. We was good, though, wasn't we, sir? Wasn't we good? Yes, you were very good. I expect I'll have to pay for it later on, though. Oh, poor old sir. We as bad as all that. You should like us, because we like you. Here. No, I won't have any more, thank you. Isn't it about time you were getting home? Well, what about your supper, though, sir? We'll come in with you, sir. Oh, no, you won't. I'll come back afterwards. You're out much too late. You're going to walk us home? Oh, good. It's just round the corner. That's what I like about this place. It's so central. I wouldn't live anywhere else. Would you, Mark? No, I don't think I would. Yeah, she lives over there, sir. All right, off you go then, Doris. Yeah, OK. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, Marge. Where's Miss Collins tonight, sir? Oh, she's out somewhere. Oh, so you're all on your own, eh? Yes. This is where you live? Yeah. Harkness lives over there, too. 
I'll tell you what, you come up with me and I'll make you a nice cup of tea. Or you may be lucky and the old man will give you something a bit stronger. Well, that's very nice of you, Margaret, but I don't think your dad would like to see me at this time of night. Oh, yes, he would, sir, honest. And Mum, too. I'm always telling them about you. Oh, come on, sir. Well, I would like to meet your parents, Margaret, but only for a minute. Oh, good old sir. This way. Come on, sir. Come on, sir, this way. Only one more flight, sir. Where do you think? But you brought me here to meet them. Well, they're not here. So that's all right, isn't it? Well, look out, she's rolling off. Oh, she's always doing that. It don't do her no harm. I bet you had some girls when you was in the Navy, sir. Was any of them like me? Good night, Margaret. Oh, please don't go, sir. I only wanted you to myself for a minute, that's all. You knew they weren't going to be here, didn't you? Well, so what are you afraid of? Who the hell are you? What's all this thing? It's her again. She brought him in. Now, wait a bell up, will you? One more word out of you. Go here, bitch! No, look, you've got the wrong one. Right. Oh. 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 Sit down. Cool, look at his eye. Oh, look, he's got a black eye. That's <laughs> nice, sir. What's the matter with your eye, sir? Did you walk into something? Yeah, he tripped over a bow. Who? <laughs> <laughs> cool. get back to your place. All right. Keep your hair on. Get a move on. I'm moving as fast as I can. We'll see about that. <laughs> Look, I don't want to use this, so don't make me. Uh, he won't do nothing. He's chicken. The reading of the Bible this week is from the first epistle of St. Paul. Cool. Stop that whistling. He shouldn't have done that. We'd get you the sack for that. There are a number of things we shouldn't do, Kite. One of them is to whistle in class. Another is to make stupid remarks and not know when you're given a fair warning. Now, listen to me. I don't know what's the matter with you this morning, but whatever it is, you're going too far. Every day it's the same thing. You say he's only the teacher, let's give him hell. Well, a teacher's human, the same as everyone else. In case you don't know, I've had all I can stand. I shan't give you any more warnings. In future, if you don't do as you're told, I shall use this. And 
Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself and is not puffed up. Angel! Oh, no, I've said nothing, sir. It's not what you said, it's what you meant. Now, I'm going to have some order in this room. I'll give you just ten seconds to settle down, starting from now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten! What? All right, hold an angel. Come out here. I'll deal with you first. Well, I didn't do anything, sir. Well, what are you begging on us for, then? Come out here and stop arguing. Well, I didn't do anything. Well, nor me. I was only laughing with the rest. You can cut out the excuses. I've had enough. Let's see what this will do. Well, we wasn't the only ones. What about Hartness, then? Yeah, what about Hartness? He was shouting, too. Yeah, what about Hartness? He was making more noise than anybody. Bet you don't cane him. Cheetah's pet, blue eyes. Yeah. Yeah, it's always yeah. 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 Be quiet! Yeah. All right, come on, you too, Hartness. All right, Hall, get your hand up. Angel. Come on, get it up. All right, sit down. Sit down. Angel, you got a right one there. They had him at a psychiatrist last term, but they wouldn't do a thing for him unless his parents volunteer for treatment as well. Always the parents, isn't it? Angel's father's in and out of prison all the time. The young Angel will go the same way unless we can stop him. He's already been inside the juvenile court, along with his friend Thatcher. He had a wonderful system of robbing the pin tables. It worked too. I tried it. I didn't want to talk to you in front of the others, but you really mustn't hit a boy over the head. There might be something wrong with him. I... Apart from what's inside, I mean. He might have a mastoid or boils on the neck. I'm sorry, I didn't think of that. Oh, and don't make the mistake your predecessor did of calling one of them a bastard. You see, some of them are. Hey, Saunders, I hear you gave Harkness a bit of stick this morning. Laid it on really hard, too. Harkness? Yes, I did. That's the stuff to give him. <laughs> You're coming on at last. It's never too late to learn. That's always been my motto. Hey, Mrs. Johnson. Good night, sir. Good night, Shrub. Harkness. I'm sorry I had to cane you this morning. If I hadn't, you know, the whole class would have turned against you as well as me. You know that, don't you? Why did you join in with them? Against me? I didn't. I was trying to shut them up. <sighs> Should have known that, shouldn't I? You should, shouldn't you? Packing this job in at the end of the term, Anne. So that's it. Why? Because you caned the wrong boy? That's only part of it. I've slipped up somewhere and, well, that's what worries me. Well, hadn't you better climb on your feet again? Instead of giving in so easily? I'm not giving in. It's just that I... I don't think I'm good enough, that's all. Well, if that's the way you feel, get out. We've enough misfits in this job, heaven knows. 
Only thing is, I, I didn't think you'd ever be one. Every lesson's a waste of time. They don't want to learn. Even if they did, it'd be something I couldn't teach them. Hey, look at that. Dear Mr. Saunders, I'm writing to remind you of our brief chat at school the other day, and I hope that whatever your plans are at the end of term, you will drop in to see me so that we may have the opportunity of furthering our acquaintance. Yours sincerely, R.C. Richards, Divisional Inspector for Schools. Well? <laughs> now I'm really confused. <laughs> Brown, Sir. Crowther, Sir. Daniels, Sir. Farley, Sir. Franks, Franks, Sir. Gibbs, yes, sir. Gibson, yes, sir. Hammond, yes, sir. Harkness, Harkness. Where's Harkness? Don't know, sir. Anybody know? I ain't seen him, sir. I ain't seen him this morning, sir. All right, Harkness absent. Harrison. You're in Young Harkness's class, aren't you? Yes. Where is he? He's over there. Hey, come on, get up, Harry. Leave him alone. Come on, Mike, Mike, Come on, get up. Get out of here, you dirty little cowards. Come back here, I'm going to hide you. Harkness, where's your brother? Why isn't he at school this morning? I don't know. Well, didn't you see him this morning? No, he was out all night. Where? I don't know, but Mum had to wait up for him. Do you know I'm in the state this morning? Saunders. I'm from Worrell Street School. Oh, yes. Fred's told me about you. I came to see why he wasn't at school today. He was at the juvenile court all day, that's why. What did he do? Hello, Mrs. Harkness. You'd better come inside. Him and two others, you won't say who, broke into a warehouse. A wine warehouse. They was all three drunk. Fred was the only one who got caught. He's never been in trouble before, not with the police or anyone else. I didn't know what made him do it. But I got it out of him. I know what made him do it now. Fred, it's Mr Saunders. Why don't you come out here and tell him what you told me? What's the use? If he don't know, it's no use me telling him. All right, Fred, I know. You don't have to use a hammer. Come on, Tim, hurry up. I've got a job to go to. We're not finished. What about your tomatoes? I've gone off them. Went off them last week. Let it go, son. You'd better be off. You'll be late. All right. Go and wash your hands, Tim. Do you mind, Mr Saunders? I've got to be at work, too. What happened in court? Put him on remand till next week. I don't know what's going to happen then. Mrs. Harkness, look, we've got to be friends if we want to do our best for Fred, haven't we? He thought you were his friend. I swear he did. With him with no father, you see. I'm still his friend. Yours too, I hope. Don't worry too much, Mrs. Harkness. It'll be all right. Breaking and entering is a very serious offence, Mr. Saunders. Think of the damage they did. Think of the damage I did? You made an error, but you very honestly admitted it. That boy was in my charge, Mr. Jenkins. If anything happens to him because of me, then... Well, I don't think I could go on with this job. Mr. Saunders, when I started teaching, my experience was very much the same as yours. 
Oh, yes, I expected miracles, and I thought everyone else would expect them, too. But effective teaching, Mr. Saunders, depends on something more than miracles and good intentions. It's hard work with very limited rewards. It's making the most out of what's available in physical as well as human material. And it requires continual compromise. Compromise? Well, that's what I'm asking, isn't it? Harkness is human material. Are we going to try to make the best of him? All right, Mr. Saunders. We'll help. But Harkness will have to watch his step in future. I'll see that he does. Thank you. This is Harkness. Uh, I've been trying to find time to come and see you, but I'm working all day. I just wanted to thank you for everything you did for Fred. Oh, that's all right. I only did what I should for him anyway. You'll have to be more careful in future, you know. The old Fred knows that, and it's more important than ever now, because I've got him the chance for a good job. Oh, he's leaving us then. I'm sorry. Well, well, it'd be a big help to me to have him earning, but I don't want to rush him if he'd be better off at school for a time. Oh, I wanted to ask you about that, Mr. Saunders. Go quietly! I'm keeping you, am I? I mean, No, no, right? we can walk down this way. Where is the job, Mrs. Harkness? Well, it's at Holt, it's the engineer. There's a vacancy for an apprentice in the drawing office. Oh, that's just the job. Fred's good at drawing. Yes, but it's his arithmetic he's worried about. Oh, don't worry too much about his arithmetic. If he's not up to scratch, I'll give him some coaching after school. Don't worry, he'll get the job. Have you told Fred yet? Well, no, not yet. I wanted to talk to you first. I'll tell him tonight. Then I'll have a word with him tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mr. Saunders. Goodbye, Mrs. Harkness. Bye. Well, Harkness, I hear you're leaving us tomorrow. Yes, sir, it's good, isn't it? Though I'll be sorry in some ways. Yeah, me too. Yeah, sir. Have one of these. Oh, no, no, I won't. Not now, thanks. Go on, it's all right. My mum knows I smoke, so I've got a full packet here. I uh, know, some other time, away from school, huh? I tell you what, you take these for yourself as a sort of present from me. Now, go on. Uh, no, you see, Harkness, masters are not allowed to accept presents. Uh, um, I'd get into trouble. <laughs> well, maybe some evening out of school then. Yeah. Good night, sir. Good night, Harkness. Oh, sir. Mum told me to ask you about references. She says I'll need two of them. Oh, yes, it's very important. I'll make one out and I'll get Mr. Jenkins to make out the other. Thanks very much, sir. Off you go, Harkness. Night, sir. I'm looking in the mirror and fixing your hair than you do putting anything in your heads. Oh, Saunders. I hear we are getting rid of Harkness for next time. Yeah, he's leaving tomorrow. Hmm. He certainly took a lot of trouble with that boy. I only hope he doesn't prove a disappointment. Well, why should he? He's got a good job to go to, one he'll enjoy. He'll be all right. Oh, where's he going then? Holford's. Holford's? Oh, I could have got a job there years ago. Fancy him getting in with a firm like that. Well? Better see they're all out the lavatories. They hang around there as if it was a gentleman's club. Practices aren't so gentlemanly, though. Good night. Good night. Come on, you two. Time you're off the premises. If you're still here when I come out, you'll be sorry for yourselves. been caught short, hasn't he? Yeah.
was Harkness. He was there. I saw him. Well, just because he was there doesn't mean that he did it. Doesn't it? If you knew the boys I do, you wouldn't talk so stupid. Steady, Arthur, steady. We don't just start quarrelling amongst ourselves. Well, he's the only boy in the school that would do that kind of a trick. Can't help himself. Got a kink or something. If you want to know why I'm sure it's him, I'll tell you he's leaving today. You always said he was going to get even with me. Well, he's not going to get away with it. Harkness! Come out here. I'm going to give you the biggest thrashing of your life. You leave me alone. Come out here, you rat. Oh, leave me alone, you bastard! You heard what the headmaster said. Get back to your classrooms. Come on, there he is. This great right. Get it. What about bonfire? It's over. If you want to prove you're on my side, come over here and stand by me. What, no one? What about you, Harkness? Let's start by getting this place cleared up. Harkness will never take it to court. Then if he doesn't, I will. 
It's the only way the truth will come out. He's got a clear case of assault against Gregory. Has he? He did strike Gregory, you know. That doesn't justify the assault. Provocation, Mr. Saunders. Provocation over a number of years. That's what Mr. Gregory will plead. And it'll be my duty to support him. You'd support Gregory? Surely you understand my position. Gregory's given years of service to this school. His record is first rate. He'll expect my loyalty and he'll get it. A man has a loyalty to his beliefs too, Mr. Jenkins. Yes, well, look where your beliefs have got you. Not only do you disagree with another master, you publicly prevent him from carrying out a punishment. And with what result? That was a spontaneous demonstration against Gregory's brutality. If there's an inquiry, I hope that will come out at least. An inquiry, Mr. Saunders, will raise a number of problems. But staff loyalty will overcome many of them. That brings me to my final point. Rather a painful one, I'm afraid. <laughs> you want me to resign? I have no choice. I don't want to lose Don't you. try and sweeten the pill, Mr. Jenkins. I'm trying to avoid bitterness. You're not helping me. I propose to advise the Education Committee that you'd like to be transferred to another school which gives you more scope. And I also propose to give you a very warm recommendation. Aren't we forgetting something? What about Harkness? How's he going to come out of all this? Let me set your mind at rest. I've seen Harkness and told him I don't intend to take any further action against him. But he's the one that should be taking action. I'm glad to say he was more reasonable about it than you are. He'll get his references, that's all he's worried about. One of them will be from you. I shall supply the other. I see. And the price of this is my resignation. It's a compromise, but... I'm sure you'll admit that it has its merits. It has its merits, all right. But to me, it stinks. Compromise. It's your favorite word, isn't it? Excellent, Angel. No, sir, not me. Yes, you were, so don't argue. Yeah, come to think of it, you were in the lavatories too last night, weren't you? That's right. I did it. Hartness never had a guts. I said I'd get even with you, and I did. You've got that damn gall to stand so there. What? I'm leaving today. So you better lay your hands on me. Otherwise, you get more than your bargain, pussy. Get away from me. Get away, or I'll. Forget it, it's all over now. Though I shouldn't let Harkness know Angel, or Mr. Gregory either. Him? Uh, I don't care tucks about him. Anyway, he knows, I've told him. He knows? Yeah, of course. Gregory, are you going to let Harkness carry the can back for something he didn't do? What are you getting at? Angel just told me the whole story. How much longer are you going to let these boys make a fool out of you? He's got nothing to gain by lying. He's leaving today. <laughs> He's not the only one who's leaving today. Why don't you let it drop, Saunders? Are you going to tell Jenkins the truth about it, or do I have to tell him? You're wasting your time, mate. We'll let Jenkins decide that. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Jenkins, I've got to the bottom of this Harkness business. The boy was innocent. And Gregory knows it, though he hasn't chosen to say so. This rather alters things, doesn't it? Do you still want my resignation? Mr. Saunders, I'm afraid you still don't see the position clearly. Well, it's clear enough to me now. Let me explain something to you. When you opposed Gregory, you identified yourself with the pupils against authority. They'll expect you to remain loyal to them. When you're compelled to oppose them in the future, they'll kick your teeth and your principles right down your throat. Now do you see why I can't possibly let you stay here? No, I don't. It's not my idea of justice. I'm going to take it up with the Education Committee. I've spoken to Mr. Richards, if that's whom you're talking about. He fully endorses my decision. Richards does? Yes, he told me to tell you that 
He proposes to offer you another school and he hopes you'll accept it. So do I. You've had a rough time here, but I think you have the makings of a very good teacher. Thank you very much. I've had a belly full of teaching. As for your offer, you can keep it. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, sir. And thank you, Mr. Saunders. Oh, don't mention it, Harkness. Merry Christmas to you both. Got to have one this time. No excuses. Oh, thanks. Well, so long, sir. Merry Christmas, sir. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, if you'd listened to us a bit more, he might have made a teacher eventually. He will make a teacher. A good one. What do you mean, will? I thought you told me he was turning it in. That's what he said, but I don't believe he will. I don't believe he can. Not now. Hey! Oh, it's you again, is it? Right, you watch for it. Oh, well, it's Christmas, I suppose. Well, I'll let you off this time. Go get out of it. Never too late to learn. It's always been your motto, hasn't it, Arthur? I'm sorry I was a bad girl. I didn't mean it, really. I'm sure you didn't, Margaret. I'll be good next term, I promise you. Well, goodbye, kids. Have a good holiday. See you next term, sir. Not likely. I've stood enough battering from you, love. This is my mum and dad, Mr. Saunders. Go on, mum. We just want to tell you how pleased we are with the way Olive is getting on at school. That's right. Getting on fine she is since she's been in your class. What? Well, we want her to get on, you see, because, uh, well, it'll be a bit difficult for her when she's grown up. We mustn't keep you, Mrs. Saunders, but we wanted you to know. I'm glad you did. Thank you very much. Mr. Thompson? Mrs. Thompson? Merry Christmas, Olive. Merry Christmas, Mr. Saunders. Come on, Olive. There's a turn up for the book. They just thanked me for helping her. I only treated her the same as the others in the class. Makes you think, doesn't it? Or it should. Yes, it does, doesn't it? I'm all confused again. Good night. See you next time, sir.